You know, I don't know why you're asking me what Joe Biden did for me personally. I, I didn't vote for Joe Biden and I don't support Joe Biden, but I do have some ability to see reality and see what's in front of me and not be poisoned with misinformation. So let's compare and contrast the two administrations. Donald Trump took office with unemployment around four and a half percent. He took office with gasoline, 239, 240 a gallon, somewhere right there. He took office during a period of the longest job growth in history. Longest job growth period in history. That's when he took office. So he took office during a time of prosperity. He took office during a time of prosperity. That's why he was able to just go play golf and hold rallies and then go play more golf and hold another rally, and then go play more golf and hold another rally, stop, pass a tax cut for the rich, permanent tax cut for the rich, and then go back to playing golf, holding more rallies, back to playing golf, more rallies. Oh, and then the pandemic came. His first challenge, his first challenge as a president, and he he completely failed. The one thing he was challenged with during his four years, he completely and totally failed the United States has had one of the worst responses of any country in the world to COVID. He took over a country in a time of prosperity. He took credit for everything that was happening. And then he failed the first time he was challenged. Joe Biden gets elected and he takes office and unemployment is, what, six, six and a half percent, somewhere around there. The global supply chain completely decimated. The global oil and gas industry completely decimated. Pandemic is raging. The pandemic is raging. So Joe Biden takes office under some of the worst possible circumstances. And his response to that was to pass more legislation, more major legislation than any president since FDR. Even though it wasn't the first thing he passed, we'll start with the Inflation Reduction Act because everyone on the right says it didn't work even though inflation for October was zero. But here's the important thing about the Inflation Reduction Act. It took over a year to pass. It took over a year to pass. Do you know why? Because the Republican Party wanted to inflict as much pain on the American people as as possible because they knew the president would have to take responsibility for it. So they drug their feet for a year to do anything about inflation. Because inflicting pain on you helps them politically. The Inflation Reduction Act should have been just like one of the COVID relief acts. It should have been an emergency. It should have been something that was passed immediately. But no, no. They drug their feet for a year. They drug their feet for a year to inflict as much pain as possible on the American people because they knew that the man in charge is the guy that has to take responsibility for it. And then he passed the infrastructure bill, something we've been promised during the entire Trump administration. Ah, a couple more weeks, we'll have it. A couple more weeks. We live in the world's richest country and our infrastructure is in tatters. Our roads and bridges crumbling. Everything like is just falling apart around here. And there's countries all over the world, beautiful countries all over the world with beautiful infrastructure. And this place is a dump because politicians don't care about infrastructure. They care about lining their pockets. So Joe Biden passed the Infrastructure Act, the Infrastructure Bill. He passed the CHIPS Act, over 70% of our, well over 70% of our superconductor microchips were manufactured in China. So he passed the CHIPS Act. That's a huge manufacturing base in the United States now. We can build our microchips here. That's created God knows how many jobs. Huge manufacturing base. Huge boom for our economy to build all those microchips here. Yet you call him China Joe, even though he took all that away from China. Joe Biden has been faced with the most impossible challenges as a president, and Donald Trump just rode a wave of prosperity. He did two things. He passed a tax cut, which didn't result in any job creation because he created less jobs than Barack Obama. And then he completely failed at a pandemic response. So we've seen how Donald Trump responds to challenges. Like a cheap suit. Like a cheap suit. I didn't vote for Joe Biden. There's a lot of things I think Joe Biden could have done better. I hold my politicians to very high standards. That's why I didn't support them. But the idea, the idea 
that Joe Biden hasn't accomplished anything is ridiculous. He took, he took office during one of the most difficult times in history, and he passed as much more legislation than any president since FDR. Yeah. He's overcome more challenges than any president since FDR. He's had the most difficult, challenging administration since any president since then. So what is this really about? He didn't fix everything fast enough for you. He didn't fix a global supply chain fast enough for you. He didn't fix the global energy industry fast enough for you. Inflation's dropping like a rock. Gas prices are dropping like a rock. Things are becoming more affordable. We're coming out of this. But since it didn't happen fast enough for you, I want you to keep in mind, we have a lot more challenges coming in the future in this country, a lot more challenges. The next president is gonna have a lot of challenges. And if you wanna vote for the, for the one guy that completely crumbled under the one challenge he faced during his entire presidency, go ahead, I don't care. But if you had to sit down in an office and you had to interview two people for this job and you had to look at their accomplishments, you had to look at their challenges and what they faced and their accomplishments, if you could look at both of those and still pick Donald Trump, then you have no business sitting in that office hiring somebody.